What is up ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Guns, Nerds, and Steel. Today we're going to be building a viable horde base at Bedrock. Bedrock is the lowest boundary of the play area and consists of an impenetrable block layer. The pros of having a Bedrock base are you'll have easy access to mining, you'll be undisturbed by surface zombies, there is an invincible base foundation, clearing the area for the base will afford you the materials needed to build it, Zombies take minor fall damage when they impact the bottom, and it's also fun, different, and cool as heck. The cons are that it's time consuming to build, vehicle access would be very tricky, it is susceptible to fatal flaws in zombie pathing if not done correctly, it can be kind of dark at the bottom, it's not early game friendly, and you need to automate the bird killing. First, I'll walk you through a minimalist version of the base, which might serve to get you started. It uses the least amount of time to mine out and construct, and then after I show you proof of concept, I'll expand on the base and show you my ultimate version. To start off, I'd recommend finding the flattest piece of terrain possible. One of the tricks to getting this base to work is that the entrance to the shaft, which the zombies will fall through, needs to be at or below ground level when compared to the surrounding terrain. In other words, if there is any spot nearby which is lower than than your entrance, the zombies will path over there instead, but more on that later. One particularly good site for this is the area within the road loop next to the trader at the city entrance. I'm going to build out here in the desert because the lighting is better. The minimum dimension of the shaft will be 2x2, two two, dug all the way to bedrock. You can check your progress by looking at your elevation in the map. Bedrock will be level plus 3. At the bottom of this pit, you'll need to create a room. This will house a simple corridor design and should be large enough to hold however many zombies you play with on Horde Night. I play with 64 zombies, so I'm going to make a 10 by 10 by 7 room. That's 700 blocks to mine out. But if you plan it right, you can get away with destroying maybe 500 and collapsing out the rest. This is where the whole host, right host you say. of pissed off zombies will be. So you should form a wall around the edge, a minimum of four blocks tall to prevent them from ever tunneling into the soft stone behind. You'll need a position to fight from, so select a spot on the wall and clear out a small room. It should be at least three by three by two, but the larger the better, so you can have space for storage and maneuvering. At the front, build your preferred fighting position. Now, there are hundreds of ways that you can do this, but for the sake of minimalism, I'm gonna simply make a hatched door. It's not the best, but it works. You'll also need to make a corridor. Essentially, you need a pathway for the zombies to run up to you so that they are not forced into destroying walls to try and tunnel their way up to you. This is critical to the function of this base, Without a pathway up to you, the zombies will dig. There are hundreds of ways to do this as well, but for simplicity, I just built a ramp leading up to a pipe which brings the zombies to the front hatch. Let's go back topside for a moment to do some final construction. You'll need to frame out the lip and the wall of the chute just a little bit. I recommend that you frame the wall of the chute a minimum of 10 blocks below ground level. And that's pretty much it. It's not pretty, but at this point, the base is nearly functional. Let's run a quick test and I'll show you what's missing. This is the most important part of the video right here. Even though the zombies could jump down the hole and then run up the ramp to attack me, they don't want to jump the distance, I cannot jump the distance. because they know they'll get hurt. Instead, they tend to clump up directly above your character and sometimes they start to dig. Digging is bad. If zombies are digging, you need to bail out and figure out what went wrong. To prevent digging, you need to give the zombies a better option. Remember how I said that zombies will path to the lowest point before calculating their next move? Well, let's give them a lower point inside the shaft and see what happens. The zombies see this as a viable place for them to jump down to without getting hurt. But since there are so many of them, most will fall down below to bedrock. A few lucky zombies will probably stand on this platform and start beating into the wall. This is normal. They don't want to jump any further because, again, they know they'll get hurt. So they just want to start digging at this point. The trick here is finding a block that they want to jump down to. Note, this needs to be a block that zombies can path over, but that they have a difficult time standing on. I did a lot of testing and I settled on this pillar 0.5 meter plate, which I affectionately call the cookie. One to two zombies can stand on top of it, but the others will fall down. 
In my experience, the zombies were happy to jump down when this block was placed around 9 blocks beneath ground level. But because the block can take damage over time, I would advise that you start about 5 blocks down and build a stack of 4 vertically. This gives you a few advantages. First, zombies will likely ragdoll as they fall 5 blocks onto the plate, decreasing the chance that they stick the landing and start damaging blocks. If someone does stick the landing, other zombies will also have a better chance to ragdoll as they land on that zombie's head. And lastly, if the top plate breaks, the system will remain intact as they will simply try to jump to the next cookie below. One thing that I noticed in testing is that the plate functions best when placed in the opposite cardinal direction of where your character will be standing in relation to the shoot. Even on end game hordes, this simple design will last the night. In Alpha 20, a new mechanic was introduced where if a zombie falls from a high enough distance, they will enter rage mode and immediately start targeting nearby blocks instead of targeting the player. This was effectively a minor nerf for elevated bases that rely on knocking zombies off a corridor. While rage mode is temporary, you can see it here. Large groups of zombies are targeting the wall instead of the player. Rage mode is deactivated on a zombie if that zombie takes some damage. To deliver some damage to the zombie, you can put traps in the pit. Spikes, turrets, blade traps, and electric fences are some examples. Right here, I set up an overlapping electric fence system so that every zombie that falls into the pit gets a bit of a shock upon arrival. In addition to the minor fall damage that they take, they're also getting a bit of electrical damage which refocuses many of them onto me and protects the foundation of the base. Now, this is just about the most minimal version of the base that I could possibly come up with, and we're facing a massive radiated 64 zombie horde, so needless to say, you'll need to scale this base up as you move along and progress in the game. But this is basically it! You're not going to win any style points, and here on GNS our motto is look good, feel good, feel good, fight good, so I'm going to take some time to get this base built up to its final form, and then I'll join you live for the final battle. All right, my friends, here we are. It's only been a couple of seconds for you, but it's been about a day and a half for me getting this thing all built up and painted. So I will walk you through some of the changes that I made from the basic version that we made just a minute ago and the advanced super base that I've just built here. Now, granted, I, your base would probably fall somewhere in between, right? This is just giving you some inspiration, things that you can try, things that you can strive towards. So this structure here is basically just to keep the birds off. I've turned these off because they're annoying and they cause lag, but I just put some SMG turrets up here just in case there's some birds flying around. I also put a big concrete slab down, and this, the function of the slab is to prevent zombies from just inadvertently, maybe like one blows up or a bird comes down and starts beating on the sand. You just don't want them to form divots because if a divot is formed in the sand or the dirt or the snow that is lower than the, where is it, this little plate right here, then they're going to go in the sand and start digging. This is very important. This has to be the lowest point that they can get to right there. So speaking of that, this is the tunnel. I have expanded it by one in each direction. So it's now an area of nine versus an area of four before. I also walled the sides all the way down. Uh, how many blocks down is this? So that's one, two, three, four, five. I put this first plate here at five and then there's one at six, seven, and eight so i think you could put one here at nine as well and that would work but i didn't want to take any chances so basically if one breaks they'll still want to jump down to the second one uh non-functional here just put some bulletproof glass with some lighting in more for the the showcase than anything but um you can see the bottom down there we'll get there in just a second i want to show you what i had to do in order to get a like an entrance to the base so originally i had dug like a, a ladder all the way down i think it was like right here somewhere and it went down into the main crafting room but uh, it was a little bit inconsistent zombies i even though i had a vault hatch on top and i had doors down below that like had walled me off zombies did want to go over there sometimes and beat on the hatch sometimes they didn't it was difficult for me to predict it and so i just kind of reevaluated. so what i did is just put a little entrance over here 
So it's just a little bit further away and it should serve the same purpose of getting in and out. You could even build yourself a little garage over here or something like that. But let's get down in here before the horde arrives and I'll show you the rest of the base. So you just go down the ladder through the tunnel and right up here to this vault door. And here we are in the main crafting room for the base. Now I have to give Wayward Echo a little bit of a kudos here because I drew a lot of inspiration from some of his recent builds in the architecture design that I used here, specifically the lighting and stuff like that. I think I still have the paintbrush with me. Um, give me that paint color there <laughs> and paint that. I actually just, I love the new paint all sides. That's like a huge relief. There we go. All right, we'll keep the paintbrush out in case I stumble on anything else like this right here, my little bunk bed. <laughs> all right. Anyway, uh, we're not here to talk about crafting rooms. We're here to talk about a bedrock base. So I'll close the doors behind me. This is just, just in case we have like a little buffer zone between our stuff and where all the action's gonna be, which is out here. Let me open this up. Oh, another spot that I missed on the paint. Give me that color this time and paint that, okay. So here we are out into what should be a familiar area to you. This is where the zombies will land. This is right in the middle right here, actually. I built two fighting positions instead of one, and I put them on powered vault doors so that when the door is powered, it's in this position, and zombies will see it as a path. And when it's not powered, the switch is off, they won't go in this direction. They can. Like, you can walk on the edge here, but zombies don't see that as a path. At least until the fun pimps patch that part out, <laughs> right? Well, uh, this is a security gate that's uh, centered but oriented vertically. Zombies do see that as a path, and they will use this. I, this is pretty much the skinniest little pathway that I've found, and it's, it has the added benefit of you can't shoot it and do any damage. Your bullets go straight through. One thing that you might consider doing down here is... If it's annoying to you, getting like a plate and just putting plates down like this to kind of so you're not shooting directly into the bedrock because you get that annoying little ding. But if that's not an issue for you, then don't worry about it. In terms of the fighting position, I'm just going to go over it really quick because I know someone will ask if I don't. So we've got the railings here on the bottom three railings these are these are actually called railings and they're probably the best block to use in this scenario because you can actually reach in between here and fix that middle one and if you were using bars or the security gate or the trellis or you know the number of other blocks that kind of look like this you wouldn't be able to reach through and and continue maintaining and repairing that middle block if needed so it's kind of a, a nice block to have. There's uh, two, one in the front here, one in the middle, and then one on the back. There are three block planes here that you have to kind of orient yourself to. There's just this round, I think it's a 0.25 or 0 0.025 meter pole block here. And then we have the scaffolding plank here in the middle, which is upside down. Railings up top as well, except we have a, a flat one in the front, a flat one in the back, and then like the L-shaped corner one in the middle to keep zombies from, if they got up here, they destroyed the first two hatches. They wouldn't be able to go left and right. They'd be stuck right here. Uh, another paint spot. Should be able to get it through the railings. Nice. As for these, classic little grenade shoot. You just stand right here and throw your grenades down. The zombies will pile up down here. Now, we're playing on 64 zombies tonight, so that's going to be very busy down there. You're going to need some explosives to kind of clear things out. Despite the fact that we have the electric fences, when they do land, they oftentimes do kind of go into kill everything mode. Plus, they're going to get knocked off of the causeway here as well. Anyway, we've got some more lighting over here. Again, drawing some inspiration from good friend of the channel, Wayward Echo. Go check him out, please. And otherwise, pretty multiplayer friendly here. I intentionally elevated this like causeway, the, the, the balcony kind of thing over here, because I want you to be able to shoot down and not shoot toward whoever would be fighting at the fighting position. You kind of have an added benefit here. If you stand here, you can catch him right uh, in line as they come up the staircase. So I think there's only one thing left to really show you. Here's the switch that goes to this door. The switch that goes to the other one is in the other doorway over there. But if we go up here, I did leave some of this like rustic sandstone here to kind of give it a more natural underground kind of feel. It just kind of remind you where you are. And this is where all the wiring is and much of the lighting as well as the electric fences. I used the arrow slits here so that I didn't have to deal with any clipping through. I think that came out really nicely, actually. 
And over here, we just have a couple of switches. Actually, you should probably gas this up. Whoop, that's not the right button. There we go. Oh, all sorts of things messing up there. Okay, I think we'll just head back down now and wait it out. Wait for the horde to get here. Put this base to the ultimate test. All right, the horde is almost here, so I'm gonna get the camera and head topside to see if I can see what happens. One thing I did notice is that in this base, when you have all of these plates kind of on one side, they sometimes they get really clumped up. We'll probably see that a little bit later, but it's it sometimes it helps if you kind of move around. Yeah, because see, they're they're kind of clumping up here, it, depending on where you're standing down below. The zombies kind of shift around and, and their behavior changes. They're doing a little bit of damage, not too terribly much actually. Yeah, I think they're moving pretty well through here. Oh, and apparently I forgot to close the doors. My goodness, I'm such a rookie sometimes. Get out of here! Stupid zombies. Yeah, those electric fences are not doing me any favors in terms of the FPS department. I'm gonna give myself some grenades real quick and just have a look down here. Look at how busy it is down there. Holy cow. Yeah, see, they're pathing really well. They're going straight across to the fighting position, but once they fall down, they're getting really, like, clumped up over there. Like, right there. That, that's probably the weak point. I did double layer that with steel blocks, so not a really big deal if they do break some stuff. That's what I was talking about. Get a really good lineup for them. So if you're using AP ammunition like I am right now, or you have the penetrator perk, man, you can just really lay it on them. Give the little grenade shoot a try. Wow, those, those roll kind of slow. And one more with the pin pulled. And I don't know, is that going to hurt me? Ah, nope, pretty good. Oh, 20,000 XP, not too bad. It's kind of easy to keep track of, like, how the zombie traffic is holding up because you, you see them fall down right in front of you. <laughs> Every zombie that falls down is a, a new zombie for you to kill. Yeah, they are starting to kind of beat on the walls a little bit too much. This is where you definitely want to just get the explosives out, get the Molotovs out. Maybe let's uh, change position and see if their behavior changes at all. So we'll, we'll shut that door off right there. Get rid of a few of these zombies. And then we'll go and open this door over here. Okay, we're opened up. Probably the zombies are just beating on walls and everything right now. They need a couple seconds to reset. Give me those grenades back out. Yeah, they've reset now. Whoops. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> They're like looking up at me like, ah, you son of a bitch. I wish I could crawl up there. They're even trying to crawl up here. Well, not anymore. Ah, we got our first demo here tonight. I'm going to set them off on purpose just to see what happens. There we go. Uh, I didn't really see what happened, but he blew up. Long story short. There we go. Got another one. Let him blow. All right, how are things looking up here? Not too bad. I, they're getting a little bit clumped up, but they're, they're making progress. I do think it's important. So what direction are we in? We're the northwest. This is the northwest corner of the chute. And our fighting positions are in the south and east. So the little plates up there are on the opposite end. And so I think maybe that gives them a tendency to... Because, like, look how they turn. They turn to face me, and then eventually they take a couple steps and fall off. Oh wow, you know, things getting real crowded here now. Here, just put a couple of these on this little shelf here. Almost like this is what it was designed for. That's because it was. Oh, another demo. There we go, nice. Oh man, they must be doing a ton of damage down there. Let's go over here and take a look. Ah, uh, yes. Yep, making some progress there on those steel blocks. 10,000 hit points, so I think it takes like four demo blasts to break through them. Oh, look at that. We got a spider over there. I'll go check him out. So a little sp spider monkey up here. He got stuck on this little ramp. They're not supposed to be able to stand on those. I mean, they can stand on them, but they're not supposed to think that they can stand on them. Because that's how the old-fashioned Jaboodle Corridor base used to work. Holy cow, shit just got real. Something blew up and knocked out the whole pathway there. In fact, <laughs> zombies are trying to claw their way up here, I think. Yep, so when that happens, uh, this is what this base is designed for. You just close that one. You don't even have to really close it. Just come over here and open this one. Maybe do less gawking up at the surface and more killing zombies.
Oh, she's putting the finishing touches here on the horde. Oh, get out of here. That was the closest call all night right there. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, they've gotten a little bit creative here, haven't they? Probably should have... Oh, hang on. Oh, just in time, my gun broke. Well, goodness, that was probably a spider right there that did that. Otherwise, my lessons learned... Oh, jeez, they're making me a little bit of a room here. <laughs> I like it. Anyway, yeah, probably should have double layered this. I did it in a couple of spots, it looks like. I thought I did it more than that, but apparently... No, I just did it up there, I guess. But yeah, I would have probably double layered the areas under the fighting position with steel, or at least concrete in behind there a little bit. I also, I think I might have made it uh, like the ceiling too tall and, and the fighting position too low. So maybe if the fighting position was like two blocks higher, they wouldn't stack up so much. Because what happened was zombies would get up here and then they would fall down and th then they would just land on zombies' heads. And they'd just be, be like standing there. And I think that's, well, I don't know. I think the demos are what did it in here. <laughs> But anyway, I think that was pretty much a raging success. We didn't have any issues with digging. Let's go topside and, and just check and see what happened up here. All right, here we are right in the morning sun and you can see that they knocked out one block. All four of the plates are still intact down here. This one's a little bit broken, but quite honestly, I think if I were to do it all over again, I might just leave two. The bottom two, the one here at seven and the one here at, at layer eight below ground level, because that that way it would just make it even harder for them to like fall down here and stack on top of each other. And there's that greater distance for them to jump down and then ragdoll and then go all the way to the bottom. But otherwise I can't imagine what else you would need to do here to make this a, a more successful base. Now granted, I'll, I've said it before, but I'll say it again. This is like the super duper advanced version but you don't need all this fancy stuff that I made here. It doesn't have to be this big. You don't have to use all the resources that I would have used to make this, but I just wanted to give you all some inspiration and make it look kind of nice. But anyway, my friends and fellow survivors, that is gonna have to do it for the Bedrock Base Build video. Be sure to leave a like if you made it this far and let me know in the comments if you have any ideas on how to improve this design. I'll be back again soon for another big base build and I hope that you'll join me again, but until then, I wish you all the very best. Thank you for watching and goodbye. While you're waiting for the next video, check out the links below for more content, ways to support the channel, and ways to become a nerd of steel. You can catch me on the Discord, Twitter, at the weekly live stream, or in the comment section down below. Huge thank you to all of my supporters who helped grow and shape this channel. My name is Temriki, and I hope that I earned your subscription today. I'll see you next time.